Welcome to another episode of my life experiences. I am Wezi Nyaniwa Sosola. If you are new to this channel, welcome once again. So last Friday, the 8th of March, I was privileged to be invited to one of the International Women's Day events organized by a certain institution here in Malawi. Yeah, it was quite a nice, insightful discussion. I was actually included on the panel uh, for discussion. Yeah, very informative, robust discussion on financial inclusion for women, on how a woman can be counted in, and how a woman can push through for themselves to be counted in. I learned a lot, actually, uh, and I'm so thankful for being included um, in this discussion as well. So just keep watching and see some of the clips that I took on this particular discussion and i would also like to hear some of the comments from you guys what do you think about financial inclusion for women how can women be counted in how they can push through for themselves and even if you've got an experience to share of how at some point you felt as if you were counted in a woman should be given the platform to compete equally just like any other person for me Counting her in doesn't mean that I should get simple then. Doesn't mean that I should get free recognition. But it means that I should get something that I deserve. But for that to happen, I have to be accorded that platform, that opportunity. On the start, starting line, even when you create your own platform, you need somebody to give you an ear. You need somebody to give you an eye. You need to, somebody to see you. You do not work in a vacuum. So, what should you do when you create your own platform? You need to provide value for money. You need to create products that people will be attracted to. You need to give services that somebody is going to appreciate. If you are, um, for example, a, a, a panelist on an interview. A woman has got all the qualifications. Don't let them leave her out or don't disqualify her on the basis of her gender. Include her to compete. Give her a platform. Sometimes people may argue that oh, when women are given um, positions, maybe they may go on maternity leave for extended times, maybe they may want to go to the hospital with the child, or maybe. So it's all about. If you have got that position, you should be able to make also to prop for um, policies that are good for women. Policies on maternity leave, policies on, on medical aid, policies on the, uh, care for, for children, and so on and so forth. If you are faced with an opportunity, you have to do a rigorous research in your area of interest. Do research, study that area. What is it that it requires? So do a rigorous research, be on top of your game, on the area of your interest, and adapt to whatever it is that you want to achieve. Another thing is hard work, as we have already said. Once you get it, you have to work hard. Be confident, have the qualification, and also, as already said, be productive. You have to be able to go to work, come home and relax. Go to your family. It's okay to be a mother. It's okay to be a wife if you are one. So just the balance of the work and also the personal. Because you want to be productive if you've got problems at home. So just make sure that you are able to balance with life. And also, don't jump on every opportunity that presents itself. Sometimes we, we tend to uh, chew, bite more than we can chew. <laughs> so you just have to get something that you can afford to do. Otherwise, you'll be worn out and you'll not be as productive. What is it that matters most to you? What's the most important thing in your life? What Linka said, do you want to leave behind? I was in a certain conference and somebody said, I don't want to be remembered as a, the woman who washed the most, the most dishes. <laughs> I want to be remembered as a career woman. But another one might say, I want to be remembered as a great mother. 
So, what is your priority? If you look at that, the things that drives you, that's what you should, when you are trying to prioritize and see what job you want to do and what your limitations, you should be able to determine your limitations. Encourage our children uh, to do what they are passionate about. Don't force them to do something that they are not passionate about. Encourage them in their area of interest. It's not about being 50-50 in every sector. If your child doesn't want to do engineering, it's okay. Let them do the arts. If your child doesn't want to do mathematics, it's okay. Let them do whatever it is that they are passionate about. The banks and financial institutions, really, we do appreciate all, all the investments that they have been doing. Um, they are corporate and social responsibilities. Yeah, we do appreciate that. Um, and just to encourage that they should continue investing, especially also in the education sector. Because we have to start from the basics. We have to start when they are young. To view, I was 12 years old. I had just sat for my primary school living certificate examinations. When the exam results came out, I sat beside the radio where they were announcing names of um, successful candidates uh, who had been selected to go to the public secondary schools. And then it used to be a cause for pride to go to the public um, secondary school. I sat there and they announced one after the other. My name never came out until they finished all those who were selected to go to public um, secondary schools. And I was really heartbroken because I used to perform very well in school. I couldn't understand. Um, I went uh, to the garden just to cry by myself. The next day, I decided to go to the school and to check on the whole list again. I checked on the list, my name was not there. I checked on the failed list, my name was not there. So it's like my results had not come out. My results did not come out for whatever reasons that I can't share now because of time. But then my, my, my guardians said, oh, just enroll you to a private school. I, I, I didn't like it, but I couldn't do otherwise. I started school at the, at the private school, but then still, because I didn't accept the outcome of these uh, examinations, I sat down at 12 years old and I wrote a letter. I first had addressed it to the minute to money, and I said, my exams did not come out, my results didn't come out, what happened? Then I made a phone call to a relation who used to work for them, money, and I said, can I send you this letter so that you should deliver for me? Then she said, no, this letter should be addressed to the Ministry of Education, not money. So I, I retracted the letter. This time I addressed it to whosoever it is at the Ministry of Education. And I told them all my concerns. I went to Blantyre Post Office, I posted the letter. I continued with my school at the private school. When the Form 1 um, was done during the holidays, my guardian came back from work and he told me, I've got mail for you. I was surprised, I was only a child. Where can mail come from? I pressed in my name. I opened the letter. Alas. It was from um, the Minister of Education mm. telling me that there was a mistake which was made and I was selected to go to a secondary school, a public secondary school. Mm. And I started in the form two. I was counted in as a girl child. We are talking about some of the areas through which women's spaces can be violated, some of the areas through which women's rights can be uh, disrespected, through which a woman can be subjugated and something done to them against their will. That's what we are talking about here. It could be in the workplace, it could be at school, or it could be wherever, even at church, these things happen. So we just want to call it out and to highlight a thing or two. Actually, I will talk about two incidents that happened as I was at school. At boarding school, where in, during prep time, we are all studying. When it was almost knock-off time from the prep at night, around 8 p.m., it was dark. Some boys just went and switched off the main switch for the school. 
Then the whole school went in darkness. Instantly, the moment the lights went off, another boy just ran. He had already identified a girl. He went to up to that girl and just grabbed the woman's breast. He grabbed the woman's breast. Nobody knew who it was because it was in pitch darkness. No one could see. The next morning, and one specific boy was talking on top of his voice saying that, I thought a breast was like a rock. I didn't know that it was a, it is soft like flesh. And they were laughing, they were making fun. Just imagine this girl whose breast had been grabbed. How can she feel? And all the boys at the school are laughing. They are making fun. That hey, cutting a bell and it is hey, when you know of who hey, I thought the breast was like a, a stone, but a rock, but actually it is a flesh. Yeah, you know, they are making all this fun, and this boy was so happy because it's like this boy all his time what he was thinking about was to find out how does a woman's breast feel like on the touch how does a woman's breast feel like in the hand when i grab it how would it feel like so that was the fetish that this boy had that was the dream that he was salivating at the entire time but when he did that he violated the space of this particular girl he humiliated and humbled this girl he bullied this girl that's what happened. Yeah, another example that I have is concerning myself. This was a day when I was coming from the hostels in the company of my friends. We are walking towards the classrooms. And a group of boys also coming from the opposite direction, they were coming like uh, towards us. As they were coming, one boy among them was coming in with a wide smile, arms wide apart, coming in for that hug like this or just coming in like this and I saw that the boy was coming directly towards my direction not towards the friends but coming towards my direction coming in for that hug you know I just did this I pushed him away stop I don't want that just go away you know I was a serious girl I was a very serious girl later on a certain boy approached me and he confided in me and said that you know you did well in shunning that boy in fact those boys were planning they were orchestrating and they were planning together they were discussing on you that they wanted to hug you that you not refuse a hug from that particular boy and it's like they had already planned they were all in on that plan they knew that they wanted he wanted to give me that hug just to prove a point to his friends and when i shunned him to him it was like a loss he had lost some cloud you know yeah so he was just trying to violate my space for the sake of his own cloud that i have hugged this particular girl as we are commemorating International Women's Day, I just wanted to highlight that sometimes violence against women, it's very subtle, very subtle. It doesn't always have to be in really a very big violence that you can provide evidence for. But this subtle, subtle violence that happens, it's best when it is happening to call it off or to refuse it immediately. Uh, because once you allow it, it will happen again and again and again, and later on it will bloat and become a big thing. Having reached that point, I just want to emphasize that women are important in the eyes of God. Women are valuable to God because they too were created in the image of God. You talk about the woman with the issue of blood. You talk about Mary Magdalene. You talk about the woman who anointed Jesus' um, hair uh, for burial. You talk about the woman who was caught with adultery when Jesus said, those without sin can they throw the first stone and everybody dispersed because there is no one without sin let's respect women let's respect women's spaces let's speak against the violations for women's spaces let's speak against the subjugation of women let's speak against doing things to women which are against their will let's speak about stereotyping women let's hold hands as we do all these things which are against women, which are a violation of women's rights. Thank you so much, friends. If you've got a comment, please comment in the comment section below. How were you violated against? How did you speak up against the violation of women's uh, spaces? Don't forget to like this particular video. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.